What's happening, everyone? Welcome to Ambrush Down Dirty Tricks. It's Thursday night. How's everything going? Let's see. I think we got good sound. We have video. Might be a little too much sound. It looks like it's peaking over here. I'm going to just jot that down a hair. Let me know how that is. Yeah, yep, yeah, we got sound, we got video, we got pretty good. All right, all right, let's see what we got here. We got 14 people in here already. Thank you guys for popping in. All right, on time, we got Robert, Darren, Mike, Grumpy RC Flyer. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. You must be in Australia <laughs> or somewhere on that side. It's morning. Uh, let's see here. All right, all right. I'm um, not seeing the chat on. Facebook side, let me see. Okay, good. We good, good. Gary She is what's happening. How's things going? We got some down dirty tricks just popping in. Alright, let's show everyone where we left off. UK. Alright, well thank you for popping in over the UK. Appreciate it. Let's see what we got here. Let's go over to here. 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 All right, Donna Bush, what's going on? My mom, mom's over on, on Facebook. Thank you for popping in. We got Julie McAndrew. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Donna is in the house. Donna from Maple Air Brush Supply, which we'll talk about it right away. Is we have our first Down and Dirty Tricks class coming live on May 4th and May 5th. So that's next month, not too far away. Uh, we're going to have an epically cool project. And that's going to be great two days. I'm going to be up there a little early. We're talking about just some other things. Maybe a couple guests will swing by. We're working that all out now. We'll release that information as it comes. So we're really looking forward to going to Edmonton, Alberta. Area haven't been there. Never been in that area of Canada. So I'm really stoked to teach there. It'll be my first time teaching on that side of Canada. I've only taught on the Montreal side. So I'm really looking forward to it. So where we got tonight? Oh. Before I get going, let me give you the details of that. So this is the details. If you're interested in the class, you can scan that QR code right there. And that'll take you to Maple Airbrush Supply to sign up for the class. Give you all the information there. And while I got that on here, let's talk thank you to all our down and dirty tricksters who help support the channel with their memberships. Remember, memberships will give you 50% off McKayFineArt.com as well as the merch store so you can join right up there with the qr code and uh thank you to all you guys who support and yeah, we're floating right around the 60 mark a little up and down and uh we're gonna keep that growing and keep things going Lindsay j what's happening thank you for popping in and what else we got going on obviously mckayfineart.com a list of our sponsors and brands. We thank everyone from Fisheye Filter, Iwata, Createx Colors, FBS, Coast Air Fusion Air, and Maple Airbrush Supply as well. I need to get Maple on there too. So uh, that's next graphic update. We'll get that going. All right, with that, let's get to it. I'm going to switch to camera one here, top down. This is where we left off. This was the uh, reference piece. How we're doing, and this is what we did the transfer. We did the chalk on one side and did the image transfer, and this is where we're at. Uh, so, we did all that last week on the feed, that was great. I went ahead today, did a couple speed things up this morning. You know, we went through most of the cuts last week, so I uh, what I didn't paint already, I added some more cuts to the reference. I also did another cut so I can get the I want to get the coat stuff started, just get more roughed in. But I want to talk about a cool way to aid in a photo. And this is a trick I learned from uh, Daniel Powers' video from years back. So this is the photo reference that I designed. All right, and what I did is if you go into uh, Photoshop and you do posterize, you can set the amount of colors, five, six, seven, seven or eight colors. Then you can go in and you can pick your tone. So if you're having trouble identifying colors or you just want, you know, remember all these colors to be blended and intermixed, you can add other tones. But if you want to pick out like your three or four or five like primary colors for the piece and get those mixed up and identified, this is a great trick. Um, so you go in and what you'll notice is 
there's no pure white in this piece at all. There's no pure black. This, which looks black, is actually, when you look at the color, it's green. It's very dark, dark, deep green. And then the whitest color here, these two, which is right here, these, this white, like right here in the cheek, that whitest part is the same as up here. It's like a greenish gray white, you know, so that way you're able to mix these up ahead of time. So if you're going to be doing a big paint, I highly recommend doing a quick photo breakdown of just the main colors. I mean, if you don't do it in Photoshop, you can just do it yourself and break down your key colors and just get it done. You know, that's from the main photo itself. And then, so you can see this is the main photo. You can do it from there. Or you can posterize it in Photoshop, which is breaking it down into just simple block shapes like I've talked about before. But now this is good because I have a nice little photo reference to work from. I can go up here. And, like, if you get really complicated, I learned this trick, I watched this trick from Dan, too, is put this in a plastic sleeve protector, and you can actually test your colors on top and wipe them off, test your colors on top, wipe it off before you go in. If you really, if you really that, if you really want to get technical and get it, uh, these color matches, then it's a great trick. I'm usually, I'm usually, if it's closed enough, I'm fine. And so I saved all my colors from last week. I put them in these little bottles. These you can get a Hobby Lobby place like that. Uh, and I strained them again. We've all talked about... I'm going to back up here for a sec. Alright, so we've all talked about the strainers before. These little guys here. Alright. Um, they're great. And these ones I make really cheap. And, and these work amazingly. These work perfect. But if you want to go a little finer... Uh, General Mendez had these on a couple weeks ago, and I've seen these around um, on Facebook. And I don't have a link for them, but I got them on Amazon. They're basically the same thing, but it's a super, super fine mesh. Like, it's, you gotta, you got to pre-mix and reduce and make sure your paint is really running thin before it'll go through this. But this will be like, when you want that final ink consistency, like for your Micron, you run it through this, and it's there's nothing, even this, like, it'll take out... You gotta be careful because if you're doing like opaque white, it'll take a lot of the pigment out of it. It's hard to get it through. But, uh, you know, if you're straining this, you're 90% of the time, you're fine. If you want to go a little finer, uh, they do make these. These are pretty pricey, whereas I make these for like a, under a buck. These strainers, you know, these just two piece ones I did. I think this was like 11 bucks for two of them. So, but they are nice because, you know, they do this. You know, you know, sit right in the cup, and then if you want, as you go, you know, you can just run it through and give it one more strain. Let's see if it caught anything. Let me strain it out. It should be nothing but little air bubbles. No, it's good. So that's another way just to be sure that you're. Uh, you're super strained, especially if you want like super details. So because this is my darkest color, I really want to get this shaped out a little bit. So, <clears throat> hey Gary Fantasia, what's going on Gary? We got Mom, we got Bradley, what's happening? Terrence Phillips. All right. And I'm not going to block these out 100%. Even though these are the stripes, they're pretty much solid black. <clears throat> I want to leave a little. I just want to leave a little there. So I can like freehand in and like shade. And like I said, I'm not trying to be 100% coverage here. I'm just trying to get it roughed in. <clears throat> Because remember, once you go 100% coverage, <coughs> you can't go back. Oh yeah, I used to put strainers in my bottles. Uh, I used to do my, my um, t-shirt bottles. The only problem I had sometimes is, you know, the strainer would get clogged up so much that I'd have to like take it apart and strain it, and, like fix the strainer all the time. But back in the day, we used to just use um, like pantyhose or silk or just go get some cloth from a craft store and put it on the inside of the bottle. Yeah, see that's enough to help me kind of frame this in.
But the nice thing is, after it's strained like this, now when you run, this is the Micron, I can run right through this no problem. I don't have any little, I don't have any little hiccups running through it. I can really do all those kind of fine little details, which I'm not going to do a lot of that yet, because we're going to save a lot of that for towards the end. We're still in that kind of map out stage. Uh, but Warlock is in the house. What's happening, brother? Sorry, I missed last week. Yeah, I wasn't feeling great. And we're also getting taxes done and all that fun stuff. So it was just a lot happening. Once you go, <laughs> I know what I say. That's in my head too, man. You never go 100%. <laughs> Or, you never go full. I mean, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to get banned if I do. So, I'm going to keep that quiet. Keep that quiet. Mr. Barker, what's happening? Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about is... Can we bring up this? All right, so you look at this photo, right? You know, and uh, like I was looking at all the greens. And right here, this mouth, let me bring up the photo one, not the edited one. So you see the mouth looks really, really pink. You know, it's got that pinkish kind of fleshy tone. That's the color. There's no pink in it at all. And no matter where I click, it's all like a, like a yellowish, greenish brown like a sepia, but more towards a brown tone er everywhere. And it's amazing that if I was to guess on my head, oh, I got to get a little like rosy pink color for this area. But by going to the photo in Photoshop and kind of clicking around, I could figure out that no, this is the color range. This is where it is. Okay. So this is all the stuff that you do ahead of time to kind of break a photo down or break a reference image down before you work with it. Um, you know, that way the whole thing, like never pure white, never pure black is like I said, even this has, you know, um, it's not anywhere near a hundred percent black. So it's mostly green, but yep. So yeah, I always find that interesting. You just go into Photoshop, use the little eyedropper tool and you can click around the photo. And you will find all this cool stuff. All right, so what I got? I got a little bit more opened up here. I, I did a little bit more here, and I'm gonna hit this. This is pretty black too, but. What I did before I got here, to before we came on, is I just got ahead a little bit and cut a few more wrinkles and details and things out. A lot of little stuff up in here. And then I want to talk about some skin stencils you can do that you can get out. I mean, it just starts framing a little more. Yeah, a little bit more in here. There's like, like five o'clock shadow. Is that because we need to spray a light? Pretty much, yeah. And it's just your your you know on that um, on that thing. Your my brain's telling me, and, and you might look at the thing and say, "Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely a little rosy pink there." But in reality, it's not. It's just it's just not that way. So. If you were to use like a pinkish red, you'd be in trouble. Now you may want to, you could maybe add a little like peach to a brown or a little brown to a peach and come there. But uh, but yeah, it's amazing. Your eye will play tricks and say, oh yeah, there's definitely some pink in there or some rose. And it's just not, it's just that brown tone. And like that white highlight here, the whitest white, it's these kind of grayish green tones. And then that middle is that, 
and that uh, kind of minty color tone. So those are some of the colors I mixed up as I was doing this. So, yeah. So, the t Grumpy RC. Some of the tips I talk about quite a bit. Um, a, um, learning to draw a little bit definitely would help. Uh, I was a decent artist, but I never took drawing seriously as far as like, really understanding light and shadow and dark and really understanding light source and angles. Um, those were the two. Uh, and like I just talked about straining my paint and mixing the paint properly. Uh, that Knowing that way ahead of time would have saved me a lot of stress in the early days of painting. So those are a couple of things. A lot of the stuff I rant on that I constantly talk about is for that reason. It's like, man, you know, I was the kid who like scoffed at the art teacher when we had to do um, like draw the apple on the table. Hated it. And then you get old and you realize, man, if I learned how to draw that damn apple, I could really make my skulls look bitchin'. So there's a lot of that stuff that I wish I took more seriously. And I started taking more seriously when I was older, you know. Yeah, but the straining was definitely a thing. Um, so there's a couple of stencils you can talk about, and I'm not endorsed, um, but I'm fair. When I use stuff, I talk about it. So I have some of Drew Blair's texture effects in here, and he's kind of... He's got this multi-shield which has like eyebrows and, you know, hair wisps and things like that that you can spray through and get little wisps. Um, little skin textures that can go through and just hit. They, they do have his micro dots as well, I just don't have them here. Um, but you can see some of them here, we'll use them. Um, so you definitely have a lot of Drew's stuff which is great. And then you have Tommy Ham, who makes a lot of great texture ones as well. So these are all great ways to add some texture while you're looking at your reference. If I'm not trying to go like crazy perfect photo, I can just hit some of these like textures. The other thing too is I can move them around a little bit and just get like a different look. So I do this for hair a lot. Uh, I'll take a texture like this. And I'll move at the same time I spray. And you get these cool, like, you get these, uh, the kind of hair. So, yeah, I mean, it's not really much in there now, but you can, you can mess with it a lot and really get a lot going on. All right, so let me go back into here, make sure I kind of hit everything I want to hit. So now that's framed out, I can come in. We'll start kind of hitting a little bit of that filth along the edge. You know, so if you want to put something, you can, like right around this, I want to get some texture right against that. So I know where it is, and I can just kind of follow it and softly add a little texture into there and just you know start shaping stuff there's a lot of they have like he has like full face ones I guess we can find some in here like obviously these are for more like specific projects but like there's a whole eye and like this isn't the same one but you could put that in here and just use it to kind of make up 
where some wrinkles might be, even though it's not exact. It just it just adds to it. So right now what I'm trying to do is get all the mid structure in of the face. And like we'll go down here and get that kind of skin going. Under here. There's a lot going on with the face and See how I'm just I'm shading and bring in that kind of stippling and shading and just that mess of stuff now. And you know a lot of it can be buried in the shadows when it's done. What does remain just gives you a little bit more uh, interest. Astro, what's going on? Ray Rod from Universal Studios Orlando. Business of pleasure down there, man. What are you doing? Going on rides or doing some work? I've n I've yet to go to Universal. I really, really want to at some point. Oh, cool, man. Brian, thanks for popping in. I really enjoy everyone popping in, enjoying it. Yeah, Adam's stuff is great as well. I usually pop there a little bit. A lot of times I pop in, because um, I do my live feeds like every Thursday night, and he does his usually after mine, or they overlap a little bit. So a lot of times when I'm cleaning up my feed afterwards, I'm watching his. I'm just, I'm just setting up the mid-tones, like, even here, see, like, I keep saying see, and I'm pointing to my photo reference. Let me bring up the, uh, I can bring that reference image up. So, like, you look in this area here, there really isn't much dark, but I added a little bit more, because I want to, I want to put, because it's the same area where the skull is. It's okay for me to put a little bit in. I'm going to texturize in here a little bit heavier. Start mapping out a little bit of the hair in here. This is good because it's just, like I said, it's setting up for... It looks a lot greener here because I haven't got the bright colors. When I start bringing this up and bringing some of the bright greens and it'd be more like it. Um, but you look at the actual photo, it's not as green, green as, you know, the screen. So, we're kind of working right around this tone right now. This area here, this area needs to be a lot darker. We'll start putting these teeth in. From Port Orange, Florida. Thank you for popping in. People from all over. We got some UK people. I know we got some Aussie people. I wonder if Mr. Powers is going to join. I got to have a chat with him as well. The trick, the trick of this painting is going to be... Good morning! 
The trick in this area is going to be going from like the bony side transition to the to the mouth. So what I gotta do, like if I get in here, some of these really small micros, just kind of define that hair a little more. From British Columbia, Ryan, thanks for popping in. Yeah, I'm going to try something out and do... I get West Virginia from Austria. Thank you, thank you for popping in. Much appreciated. Let me just give a little... Thanks for popping in, everyone. Mike Manning. Mike Manning with the Super Chat. Thank you, sir. Mike Manning is still the record. He's been, the, I think you were the you were the first member, or well, you've been the longest member because I, I just did the every time I do a feed, I look at the update, and it shows how long people and what color they are with the red and the and the purple and the gray and stuff like that and. I'm 99% sure Mr. Manning was the first in OG sign-up. So thank you, Mike, for all your support. We really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go back here. You don't need to see my ugly face. But you can see how it's slowly coming along, and we'll get to this point. Just by framing this out, now you start to really kind of see it come together. Uh... <laughs> Too much, Steve. I'm missing everyone's feeds this week. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now, so I got this, and then I'm going to start working on the piece for my maple airbrush course. And that's going to be involving this little guy here. So, because it is on May the 4th. So it's going to involve, this as a reference, and Donna is going to be 3D printing one of these for everyone. Not this quite big, it's going to be a little smaller than this, because this was a solid block of resin. Uh, so I think we'll make it about, you know, uh, I did another one, but it'll probably be somewhere, this is a, just a crystal size one, it'll be about this size. You know, so it'll be good, everyone can use it for reference, and we're going to, I think, paint it in the class as well. So everyone who comes to my Down Dirty Tricks in uh, Edmonton, Alberta uh, will get one of these to work from his reference, which is going to be fun. Cool, cool. <clears throat> All right. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Like, I want to do some erasing. I want to mess with this mouth a little bit. I really want to mess with this mouth just a little, but... Let's see here. Let's see if I can get. So I'm getting it here. There are no bids on this baby yet. This is still open. It is wide open. I wasn't sure this was going to be a high bidder type of thing, but we always accept them. Mm. 
Let's get this lower part of the mouth roughed in. Right? Yeah, where's Gerald? Where's Gerald? Oh, you need him. Oh yeah, see that little darkness in here? What we have? We have a bid of 150. Which is a nice way to start it out. Let's see. Oh, here we go. We, oh, wait, 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 we need the... I'm gonna put a little list up here so you can see oh, i'll back up yeah you know i'll go a little further out of this one so you can see and here we go we have warlock at 150. cool 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 yeah i don't know if this is going to go into a third one or it probably won't go to a third one. It might go into a third, like just a, a wrap up another day. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to do another Thursday night with it. We'll say that. So it'll probably be. We'll decide where the bids are tonight and where they're at. What type of paper you use for? Just printer paper, nothing fancy, regular. I usually get like a nice higher bond paper or like a, almost a cardstock type. Um, anywhere from like 60 to 80 pound paper is just kind of what I like. Like, so this was the first stuff. This was like pretty thin paper. This might've been like a, just a regular printer paper, maybe a 30 weight or so. And the stuff I did tonight, I got another, I just got it. This is a lot harder. Uh, I like this a lot. It's a little harder to do the picking though. So the thick paper gets hard to do the pick. The thinner paper like this is nice because you can do all that little picking stuff that's in there. Um, so just a thin printer paper works. Nothing crazy. You know, nothing, you know, I mean, I think the kind of thing is you just don't want it super cheap. Because um, you want it to, um, to hold together. Dave Gregory! Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so the other thing you can do, I want to try this. This was a Gerald thing. I'm going to go down to like almost nothing PSI. And look really close. Let's, let's go in here. Okay. So I don't know if you can see, I'm actually, the trigger's on. Okay. See that? That spit. Super little stubbles. I'm at like a pound <laughs> or two. And I'm gonna go into here. Uh, maybe bring there, if I could bring the ISO up a little bit. 
you can see, yeah, there we go. So like watch down here, I'm at, you can just hear it. Come into here, I got the pressure down to like two. And I'm just gonna, just gonna put some little hairs in here. No stencil, just air pressure. And it's just enough to start adding. You can put it in here as well. If you go thinner, it'll be even more, um, more dotted, but. but so now I can go into here and kind of do little bits and now we can go up and I can start bringing the mouth curl around. off that and now you know, I'm kind of scared of this color I'm kind of scared of this color let's see Color-wise, I think it needs a little. That greenish brown I made, I'm going to put a little bit of orange in it. And get a little closer to color, I think. Now, so Ryan, if you're going to be doing a piece for a long time, um, it's going to get pretty wet. Photo paper works great because it stays around quite a while. All right, I'm just going to hit this little bit. There we go. That little bit of peachy brown in here. Yeah, just that little bit. I can always tone it out. It's a little redder than I want, a little orangey than I want, but it's going to be easy to tone back. So that's cool. It's really cool because I'll bring in some white. And I'm going to put a little bit up here because if you look, you can see a little bit more of it on the reference. Yeah, you can see a little, it's a little peachy in here. It's a little bit in the cheek in here. Not really anywhere else, but it just gives a little bit of that fleshiness to it. Yeah, 
So this is that, it's like an orangey brown. Of course, just enough, just to kind of wake it up a little bit. And then we'll see about erasing. Frisco! What's happening, man? Thanks for popping in. Clear acrylic. So I've done many headlights. I'm sure people have some their ideas as well. I usually do 800. Um, then 1,000. Then I clear coat over it. Um, yeah, even with Kratex, I'd probably do the same thing. I'd probably use like an 800 grid or 1,000. Um, and you could always do 1,000 then some adhesive motor. That's kind of where I would where I would kind of put it. Gerald Mendez. I see Mr. Mendez. How we doing, sir? We are continuing from last week's painting. Where is my... Here we go. Hello, my good friend. Good to see you. Thank you for popping into the feed. So this is where I can start playing a little bit with softening things up. Bridging the gap so you don't see these hard lines. Exactly. So to you it just looks like your... It doesn't look like a green face. But it's Beetlejuice so he has to go green. But he'll be a little whiter. But yeah, he'll be more like that. Yeah, it's it's really a sepia color. Um, it's not very green. It's it's definitely a green sepia tone, brownish color. It'll have some greens in there uh, when it's done, but mostly sepia tone.
But I was showing everyone, you know, Gerald, we've done, you know, I've talked about how I make my little just quick strainers for straining big stuff. You know, how cheap these are and they work. But I saw the ones you were using and I've been seeing them. You know, the other strainers, these little guys. Um, and those are, those are really great. Those ultra fine. Of course I can't find it now that I need it. But yeah, those strainers you show that fit right in the cup, those work great as well. Super silky. Gets that, just that extra bit. So, any, any hoozle. I want to get some of this um, kind of minty color going in. Yeah. So, you're not colorblind. You're fine. It's sepia. It's <laughs> pretty much exactly what it is. Like I said this this is this is a fun painting. It's definitely super involved. Um, it's why I didn't want to make it like a follow along how to. I think this one the cool thing about this one is I'll get a lot of good video footage of how to do independent you know individual techniques. And then when the painting's done, it'll be really cool. This uh, the organization. Yeah, I really want to get that one from the uh, hobby zone. Um, the configuration I have right now is like four hundred and something bucks, five hundred bucks. So before I pull the trigger, I gotta, I gotta get some, uh, I get some extra funding in the bank before I pull the trigger on that. Um, but it's definitely, definitely gonna, it's definitely gonna happen. It's just a matter of when I can swing it. All right, I want to get. Some of this kind of minty skin tone in there. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, the skulls are great. All the videos are up. So you should have no problem finding them. If you do, let me know. So I'm going to start spraying this kind of minty color. It's hard to see. But this is the actual color. This kind of mint green. Um, and that's going to be kind of up around in here. It's a much cooler color than what we've been using. But it's going to add some nice color, texture, and tone. And we can soften some areas up with it. So you're starting to brighten, brighten his head up a little bit. And if I start going in here, in the face. And then say if we go into this, we can use, uh, this is a good one. Let's use a little of this right here. So see how you can see that it kind of tracks with the face. I want to go here and just put a little bit of that in here. And it starts to brighten that up. A little bit of texture in the nose. Just enough.
Give us a little brightness to the teeth. Just setting everything up. <laughs> Sleep with Prince Valium tonight. That's great. Love that line. That was an awesome line. All right, so that's kind of that minty green color. And it was this. Let's kind of clear that out. is a little bit grayer. Yeah, so this is a little bit, this will show up more white. See? Because remember, when we do our racing, we're only going back to this kind of minty green. We're never going to white. So this one here I'm using, this has a lot more white in it. So you can see a little white skin textures if I come into here. Now I'm just kind of picking out the photo reference where I see a lot of bright. I just want to get it kind of up there. Get a little tone so you guys can see and then we'll push it back. These little micro dots are great because it's going to simulate skin pores. So when you really zoom in on it, when you see it in person, all those little things show. Be like, oh, how'd you do that? That's pretty simple. You know, and you can look at guys' videos and how tos, like from Drew and everyone else, who get really into photorealism. I'm more of a stylized photorealistic guy. I like it to look like a painting. Um, and I'll put a little flare and kind of kick into it or over exaggeration. It's more my speed. And she can go any direction you want. But see, it's starting to get that kind of look. And I am going to change the ISO again because it's a little too bright now, I think. Oops. It's getting too light. There we go. See, there you go. That's. That's kind of more what it looks like in person. You start to see all this little... All the little textures in person. That is why I won't do two shows in one night. I won't do it. Yeah, this is definitely not a, uh, a 
project to complete during a live feed. <laughs> so this is more going to be a, a technique based thing and we'll make a bunch of little extra videos out of it. So now I'm gonna do all that fine like white work and that starts to get that makeup-y look. So I asked well how they got it got it caked on. And this is kind of how you do it and just kind of build it in and out. And I'm going super fine here. This paint's been strained a lot. It's very transparent. And I will tone back this with the green. Now some wrinkles into these clothes. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I try to blend them so you don't really see a harsh line starting to stop. Um, this one's worked out pretty, pretty well so far, I think. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Joe, you need any help, give me a ring after my feed's over. And I can help you troubleshoot through some stuff if you need it. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know what it's like. Uh, once you get it going, you're good. You'll be good. But it's definitely, it's definitely a learning curve. Uh, once you get all your settings right, it doesn't change much. Um, once you get your settings right, do yourself a favor. Take notes of everything, like streaming keys, where you put stuff, your settings. Um, you can, you know, you can save your settings for a stream, so you can call them back up anytime. Yeah, good. Glad you got it. It is a pain, it is a pain in the butt. So it's a lot, but the nice thing is, once you have got it. Once you got it, you're on. You're in pretty good shape. Where is? Want to darken up some more stuff. Want to get a little broader. Where's the stamen? <laughs> yeah, I haven't done it with my windows actually. So um, I tried. My Surface Pro is so old; it never really worked well. So I never bothered. Yeah, 
Whoa! See, that happens. Keeps getting funnier every single time. I... Yeah, I realize I can quote that almost as good as I can quote, uh, from the Holy Grail. Even though you really can't see it, I'm going to put just a little bit of fabric lines in here. Yeah, I'm not doing Holy Grail. That will get too far. I know where that leads to. It's a gateway drug. Trust me. Did a Holy Grail one last year. We did a whole feed. It was a riot. Yeah, I'm just going to use this, I think, to create an edge. Just, uh, if you look at the, when I bring the photo up here, there's just a little stuff going on. I'm not trying to replicate that like green glow. I'm just trying to give it a little something. Something we can bounce everything off of. Definitely hit that like button. Robin and Monahan, how are you doing? Thanks for popping into tonight's live feed. That's why I keep my that's why I keep my Facebook one going. Because the YouTube one is the big one. 
But every now and again, good old friend's Facebook pop up. That's why I keep it. That's why I keep it going. Hope you and the family are well. And my sister. Hi, Robin. We have two Robins in a row. Fine, fine, Phil. Holy grail. Princess Bride. And he went, oh, man, I can do a Princess Bride painting one night. What can we do there? What kind of Princess Bride painting? We talked about Sin City. And I definitely want to do one eventually. But, man, I couldn't find anything I felt like doing that already hasn't been done to death on Airbrush. So I have it in the Sin City one. Princess Bride. It'd be cool. I've already done a Holy Grail one. <clears throat> oh, speaking of. Cheers, everyone. Oh, for those who missed last week, I talked about it earlier, was we do the erasing technique to get down to white typically. But instead of white, what I did is I put this green, kind of, you know, mint green, white, gray tone. So what we with our solvent paint and then sanded it. Um, oh, just a little maker's mark tonight. Nothing crazy. Uh, so that way, when we erase, that's our color. And if we want to go white, then we can bring it up. The other way. So it's a little different than um, the normal way people have been doing it for a while. But I wanted, I didn't want, every time I erased it, I want to get to some erasing. I didn't want to go back to pure white every damn time. So we got my sister Robin on Facebook and. So you see everyone this weekend. Really good time. All right, here we go. Starting to come together. I am going to put a video together on how I did the compositing of the computer for this image uh, and how I do the color picking. That's all going to be part of it. I'm going to definitely break that down, how I do that. 
um, with the images and kind of the do's and don'ts. Yeah, I'm definitely going to find some time to finish more stuff on the feed with this, but I, I don't think I'll be, I will definitely won't do this one next Thursday. I think next Thursday we should move on to something a little bit more poppier and, I don't want to say fun, but something that comes together a little quicker. I know these kind of more realistic ones, they're just, they're hard to watch for a long period of time because very little happens fast. And I know on the live feed it's, trying to keep people's interest by being able to accomplish a lot in a short amount of time is always kind of my goal and I think all the techniques I've done here I've covered almost everything um, but now it's a matter of just you just got to keep going until it's done so I think I'll finish this like in an overtime type setting because <laughs> when I get to do this hair no one's going to want to watch the entire thing of hair but I think if I finish it off camera then we can do some final edits and you can watch the magic of editing you know an hour's worth of hair <laughs> in a 30 second loop I think it's more fun for everyone Let's go to a three-quarter shot for a little bit. Here we go. Look at all this mess over here. <laughs> there we go. We can bring that in and get this a little closer up. This is always fun. I get that close up. I can bring the ice. There we go. Now you can see kind of both happening. But you can really see the three-dimensionality. May the fourth is coming. So, May the fourth, I'm going to be up in Canada, Mike. I'm teaching a class up at Maple Airbrush Supply. And that is going to be blah, 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 right here. There's the info. So, yeah, May the fourth and fifth. So, I did do a Star Wars themed piece. Uh, I'm going to do like a Darth Maul style skull with like maybe a background battle scene, a lot of glowing green, blue, and red kind of tone in the background. So it's going to be a really fun piece. Uh, that's going to be up in Canada, up at Maple, Airbrush Supply, so definitely uh, check that out if that's an area you can get to. That's probably my only live appearance this year, but it's the first time I'm really bringing Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks live outside of like we used to do at the circus and then everything expanded here. And, uh, so it's going to be great. We're looking forward to going up. We're going to do a two-day class, and I think we might do a meet-and-greet Friday night. 
talking about that now. Because we don't know when the next time we're getting back to Cali will be. Probably not this year. So that's the class we got coming up. And of course, don't forget our store. Next week we'll bring out a project. John Paul, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So that's what we got going on up in Canada. So look forward to seeing a lot of you guys up there. We're almost we're almost sold out that one. Um, I capped it at 12, but I think we're gonna go up to 15 because I got a surprise helper. Um, who happens to live in that area that we're going to announce. Um, and so I think we might accommodate up to 15 students, so that would be great. That's the opposite end of the earth. Mike, what state? Where are you now? I thought you were in Cali for some reason. So, Paul, you can ask ask away. I'll do my best to answer it. But if I can't, you can always message me um, privately. If it's going to be something too complex, but feel free. I will do my best. Thank you. Yeah, it's a fun panel to do. It's fun painting. Brian, thank you very much. I'm digging that pig bike you're doing. Is that a recent one you're doing, or is that just something you've been an older one you posted? Because that was that was a pretty bitchin' pig. Oh, 87 Sunday. Well, it's not at the opposite end. You just have to go up straight from Phoenix. <laughs> I I miss going to Phoenix, man. I loved I loved doing those classes there. They were great. I actually talked with um, um blah blah blah. I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, Pete Huffer. And see if we can come out and do something with him and the guys out there. I'd love to pop out there again. I always have a blast in Phoenix. So I'll have to give him a ring. See if we can set something up. But me teaching in Edmonton, that's the opposite end of the world for me. Because <laughs> I'm going... From one side of the country to the other. All right, let's uh, here, top down. Mm -hmm. There we go. Do you ever attach scuba tag? Do you ever? Oh, I've painted a scuba tank. Um, I'm trying to think of a painted a scuba tank. I think I did. I've done plenty of saltwater boats and stuff like that. Once you once you put a good high quality urethane 2K clear coat on it, you're fine. Uh, the biggest thing you got to do with scuba tanks is uh, make sure what you use properly and have them certified, have them checked before and after. 
Uh, that's the only thing you got to wor worry about on scuba tank is can they be certified afterwards. Uh, some places have rules, um, like you can't paint in certain parts of it. So definitely look into that. The salt, don't worry about the salt. Because anyone who scuba dives or uses the boat knows that once you come out of the water, you rinse them off. Uh, would you ever run an LP800 with your air hose? Okay, so I've I've run my LPH with these before for small compressor for doing small work. It, it's fine. You can get away with it. Um, you're not getting quite the proper CFM airflow through it, but they work. Um, I do it quite a bit for murals and stuff. Uh, the 3.8 air hose, you just need a, a more powerful air compressor. But what I have gotten away with is a smaller compressor with a 3.8 hose to the gun. The gun will operate a little bit better than trying to get a small compressor to run through a, um, a wide 3 8 hose. So, yes, you can do it. Uh, we're just going to play around a little bit. My good turners, I know as much about interior, about supernatural, so I do interior design. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, I need to get what I'm missing. I'm missing. There's this green. Okay, so I got your color. Yeah, maybe I'll do it overtime tomorrow or beginning of the week and wrap this thing up. Dan, you're welcome. Yeah, check out the rules, you know, Paul. It, it's definitely something I haven't done them in a while. I like I use it. I do use an air tank sometimes when I'm doing live, not live feeds here, but when I used to, um, when I used to do live events, I used to use CO2 tanks, and they would always be certified fine. I painted those before, but they weren't going underwater. But I think you're fine. Just check with dive dive shops or dive master. Okay, so let me uh, ISO down again. So I'm going to take this. This is a, like a transparent minty green. This is the color I really want to get in. Because this is really the color of a lot of his like damage. Like in here. So I really want to get some of this in there. See that? Get that green. Nice in here. Yeah. This is that Beetlejuice green color coming in. That's going to start giving me that color tone I want that I can bounce off of, especially in the hair. Michael Stanton, what's going on, man? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this new movie as well. Text. 
Yeah, see this green, this is what I wanted. Now I can kind of start getting this. So see, now that I have everything established, now this kind of transparency, kind of not minty green, but green will really start to bring everything together. It'll kind of bring the whites and the whites together. Daniel Powers, what's happening, man? We tried to catch up this morning, but we can catch up. We did. We can catch up after I'm finished with this. If you're around, so this green now I'm doing is that. And it's a little bit, it's not as opaque as I want it to be, but I'm going to be able to adjust that with some of my other colors and tones. But it's getting the color value I want, especially down here in the coat. And when I start going in with like the hair color, the white, it's going to bounce off this color really nicely. So now when I erase off that green in here, I don't go down to pure white. I go down to the original white. So it's, it's giving me a much nicer look. It's not jumping as much. It's always weird to see on camera because it's like if I can put it square, you can tell that the proportions are right. But the proportions always look a little off on camera because you're not I'm not exactly square with the piece. Which is why I kind of like the different angles.
Brian Lugo, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Daddy, I keep Facebook on just so some old friends can still see it. And just remind people the good feed where everyone's hanging out is over on YouTube, Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks. Facebook doesn't really share the videos well, so I don't focus a lot over here anymore, but I still keep it going so you guys can see it. And there's never three or four people on Facebook doing it, but we got anywhere from 30 to 50 at any given time over here. Eventually, I'm probably going to stop using Facebook entirely for the feeds because I can do another platform and have more people see it. So, I just haven't decided if I'm going to move it all to Instagram or TikTok or one of those other ones and just see. Yeah, man, that it can kick your butt. The Zuckerberg enters the chat. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably if I if I turn it off on Facebook, I'll probably end up turning Instagrams on. We'll see. I mean, I like to keep the Facebook on because my family and a lot of older friends see it, who aren't on Instagram and stuff. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think on the hair I'm going to end up doing a lot of brush work. They think it'll just work out a lot cooler. I read through that hand with him. I have a copy of that actual book. It's a journal. Yeah, it's 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 not about the traffic really, it's just how the algorithm shows it to people. So No, we'll give it a shot and just see. We'll mess around with it, but YouTube is the best one overall. And it pays me well. Yeah, I'll definitely give it a shot over on Instagram and see. I mean, Instagram and Facebook, same company. It's just a matter of how their sharing algorithm pays off for video feeds. So we'll see. I noticed on Instagram, too, and Facebook the same way. As soon as I got... As soon as I broke, like, 10,000, if I'm not paying for ads, no one sees half my posts anymore. Once you go past like 10. Facebook, my business page, once I hit over 7,000, it, it basically everything crapped out. YouTube, the more people that follow, the more viewers you keep getting. Yeah, so we'll make this a lot greener, but just kind of getting it worked out for now. I think this would be a cool way to kind of end the feed with it near done. I 
And I might use a little candy green to get that glow at the very end once I'm happy with it. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Yeah, the meta algorithm, it's, yeah, it's just, a lot of it's just pay to play, whereas Google recognizes the more people watching, the more people see ads and stuff, and they're not trying to bill me, they're trying to get more videos, more eyes on my feed, it's a very different model, it works so much better, but it just, it takes more work to get followers, that's the thing, and you gotta put a lot more time in uh, to YouTube. Facebook used to be rocking, Dan. It was, I mean, I would do a live feed from an event, I'd have 200 people watching. As soon as I turned it on, it was amazing. And then it just changed. It was like... It really just wasn't... It just wasn't working anymore. Winding down. Starting to wind things down. Oh yeah, I'll be at SEMA. It was your last year, I'm there every year. I haven't missed one since oh seven, I think. Except for the one where they cancelled. Alright, but yeah, let me know if you're going to be there and when. And 
where you're at. We'll see if we can hook up. Definitely need a little greener pop in here to really get that. Yeah, so I think of that neon green I'm going to add at the very end, Warlock. It's going to be, I think I'll take a candy color after I get everything and kind of do some washes and get that pop. Uh, I don't want to do that bright green until I'm really... Kind of established, um, and I want to. I don't want it as bright as you're seeing it on the screen. Um, you look at it here; it's more where I want it to be. The screen one is very bright, um, so I kind of want it in between. I want to get a little bit of that pop, but right now I'm closer to, you know, the photo than the one that's on screen. But I, I do want to get that bright neon kind of pop. So back here, we're going to finish the hair and stuff. So that'll probably be in the highlight reel. Because I'm coming up on 10 o'clock. Because there's no way this is going to be done tonight. We're going to do some skin tags here. A little, little freckles. And I think we're going to call this done. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do an auction thing when it's done, done, and see where it's going to be. Um, it wasn't really... Pieces like this really are kind of not auction heavy. Um, or it'll be something we I just put up on the store. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I'll probably do an emerald green candy. And I'll start hitting those brights. Um, I'll keep you posted on it, man. You know, let everyone know what I'm going to do a little more. Or maybe I'll do another feed with it before next Thursday. I just don't want to carry this on to next Thursday. I think it's just too much. The, the one I did the three on was the Joker gesture. And we just did that. So I don't want to do another swampy green. <laughs> I don't want to do another huge feed. That's the other three. I want to get on to something a little poppier and fun. But for all intents and purposes, this is, you know, it's, it's done enough for it. Now it's going to be a lot of, a lot of repetitive blending. A lot of repetitive blending. Yeah, daytime after hours one. Those are fun because by UK people get to see it. Maybe I'll do it next Tuesday. I, I want to start doing my tabletop Tuesdays with all the tabletop gaming stuff. So maybe I'll use next Tuesday to kind of finish this up. Or at least show it like how it wrapped up. And honestly, it's always just me. Sometimes I just want to finish the complex ones. On my own in silence. <laughs> but I'm happy with the way this is coming out. I really want to get these wrinkles. Good night, Brian. I, I get these like horizontal wrinkles. I gotta get these are all good going up. But I need to kind of get that horizontal if you look at the reference.
get some of these big strokes of hair in. Definitely gonna do some brush work in the hair. The hair definitely needs work. Background, I'd say the face is about 80% there. We'll start softening some things up. Bring in some highlights, bring in some finals, get that green glow. Want to mess with these teeth a little more. They need a little bit more. All right, I'm getting to the point. Yeah, like I'm really happy with the stage of this. Is in. Gary, she's right on eyes. The loose is starting to tighten up. Yeah, it's all coming together. You know, this is one of those from here on out. Just like we do in fire or anything. It's refinement. It's push pull. It's you know a little of this, a little of that, just to get it to where you want it in the final green. I got all the basic structure there. I have a lot of the, you know, whip how I like things to look. And now it's just a matter of, you know, finalizing everything, which is really, as when you're in the art space, it's really when you have to like just zone and do it. What? And I can do it now because they have Google has a YouTube music channel now. That you can like play so i gotta see a way i could pipe in some music so at least we can get some tunes going um when we're doing these like long projects that a lot of times there's got to be some silence and it's really hard for me to have silence when i know a bunch of people are watching because i want to talk but at the same time i want to get into the painting and just not talk <laughs> you know, if I go in here with a lot of whites and stuff, I think. Yeah, details like this like at this point. Yeah, it's all details. It's all little micro adjustments and little teeny lines, especially on a painting this big. 
You know, that's why I usually try to do complex things. I almost did this half the size. And it would have been really cool if I did. I probably could have had it done. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I could sit here for another hour and just detail. And that's what's fun about this. You know, but it's hard for people to follow along, I think, at this point. Because the changes are so subtle. I don't know, we'll see. You guys let me know in the comments if you want me to, you know, finish the hair and everything on screen. I definitely, I think I'll do like an overtime or like another hour wrap-up cleanup and how I did the hair, or just little things like that. And, um... I'll record everything and we'll start getting the footage out and what's what. But I think for now that's a really kind of cool place to end it. We can get this over here. Oh, fingerprint oil. Not done, but not too far. I think that's about where I'm gonna leave it, kitties. We're five minutes to close. And with that, I want to say thank you everyone for popping in, watching this feed and last week's. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please send me some ideas for future projects. And I'm uh, getting into spring finally, so looking forward to some new fun projects and go from there. So hope everyone loved this. Hope you learned a little bit. don't even want to see that eye too much. I'll get this darker here before we go. Really close it out. There we go. Lindsay, you're welcome. Thank you for all your super chats, everyone. Thank you for your support and likes. Thank you to all my members. Keep it coming. We'll keep building. Maybe I'll just finish this off for members only. That could be cool. Just an afternoon feed of members only, and I'll keep everyone posted. We'll make it work. So with that, I hope everyone has an amazing weekend. I'm going to say an early happy birthday to my mom. We're going to have a little birthday. She's turning 40. Uh, um, and I want to thank everyone for popping in past this week and the week before we started this. And uh, until next time, start sending me some ideas. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and uh, join up. Let's get things going. Yeah, I think members only. We're going to do that. We're going to do some things there. Uh, and I'm definitely going to post the members only how you did the Photoshop thing and all that stuff. So, uh, And uh, you guys get first sneak peek at all that info before it starts going up. From here on, anytime I do like an edit video, I'm going to put those in members only for the first few weeks before it gets out. Um, so... But yeah, I'm really happy with where this is at. So uh, thank you all for watching me uh, do a little close to photorealism. Not quite, but you know, this is about where I like to be with it. So uh, uh, I'm glad everyone uh, joined up and super chatted. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next week. Same Beetle channel, same Beetle time. See ya!